uh, the responsibility on Pakistan on the other side of the border to only increase because, uh, you know, as the international forces withdraw and Afghan national security forces come, uh, become more and more, uh, you know, uh, able to uh, manage defend. the country and defend the country, uh, I think it will be, we will be looking at, uh, you know, how the situation uh, grows. But as I'm saying, uh, it will be what will be determining uh, is, as to what sort of a situation uh, exists at that time uh, or circumstances exist at that time is how we um, manage uh, or what we do from now sitting in the early parts of 2013 till the middle of 2014. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the lasting guarantee, I think, for peace, stability, and prosperity in Afghanistan can be, uh, you know, through an intra-Afghan dialogue, a process of political reconciliation, so that the insurgent groups are part of the political process and they have no incentive to uh, continue with any sort of insurgency, any bomb blast, any violent uh, manifestation of their, uh, you know, objectives. So uh, it's extremely important as to what happens from now until 2014. All right, turning to another subject, mm -hmm. there was a large protest. This is the cleric Kadra. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you've yeah. had a lot of questions sure. about this. He called it a million-person mm -hmm. march. Uh, and he's asked, uh, he says it might be a Pakistani Tahrir Square that he uh, points to uh, the, the corruption, lack of enforcement in government. To what do you think his support is attributable. Do you think he is uh, supported, as some people believe, by the military? Uh, he's certainly pro-Western. Where does his support come from? And then, if you could tell me, does the, is the government um, looking to meet any of the demands? You smiled. What, what's your view? I mean, the, what is the reason behind smiling is, <laughs> you know, this is a person who, until a few weeks back, was enjoying a comfortable life in Canada, uh, oblivious to the many uh, uh, you know, demands or the weakening of the political and the other system on Pakistan that he now feels so heartedly and so passionately uh, for. And then he arrives a few weeks back on the Pakistani scene. He's a person, by the way, you might be interested to know, who's not even eligible to contest elections in Pakistan, according to your constitution right now, because in Pakistan you have to be only a Pakistani and not have a dual nationality. Currently, that might change in the future, to be able to... So he is an entity who, according to the constitution, cannot have a political role within Pakistan because he's not considered to be a, a pure Pakistani national in that way. Now, uh, so he comes in and creates demands which are in some ways against the constitutional fabric of Pakistan, okay, because he wants a role, for instance, for the judiciary and the military in the political disposition. That is preposterous. Uh, you know, it can be called many words which I would not like to use. Uh, and so, you see, uh, you have to have a credibility, a legitimacy, and make legitimate uh, demands. Now, we all know Pakistan has those challenges. I am aware, as much as he is, of the challenge that cr corruption presents. We are equally aware of the challenge that, you know, institution uh, st or weaker institution presents. We are equally aware of many, many challenges. But what is the way to, can you circumvent those challenges? No, your government must be worried about People, some kind of m people expressing something through him because the cell phones were cut off. Is that correct? No, you see, we have to. This is uh, it becomes a security situation, and you have to deal with it in a reasonable manner. And that's why this is because, of course, when you collect thousands of tens of thousands of people in a country where you have a tendency for bomb blasts to happen, it's not an easy situation to deal with. And you asked as to where his support uh, is coming from. Now, he does, uh, he has been running a philanthropic uh, sort of organization for many, many years. And that uh, does create, you know, the many tens of thousands of people who are associated with that and the, those people who, so I don't think it's very difficult to collect tens of thousands of people anywhere in Pakistan by anyone. I mean, it's no rocket science. Uh, why has he created so much news? I think simply for the reason because of his pre you know, demands and just um, sort of landed out of nowhere and then making demands over the system as if he's been the, you know, if there was a, if there was a person who had contributed to the, to, to the Pakistani political system, to Pakistan itself, who had invested in Pakistan, invested, uh, fine, but you can't just come out of nowhere and make demands of the system as if uh, the system owes anything to you. The system certainly owes a lot towards 180 million people, but I think we have to be 
mindful of uh, you know entities like this not to be allowed to hijack. Do you believe any of that? When I look at something <laughs> like this, I say, well, who's behind him? Someone is helping. Um, there are a lot of rumors that the military in Pakistan is supportive. Do you believe that? Well, the military has obviously denied it, so I don't think I have any reason to believe that. Um, however, uh, you know, his, his, his entire, uh, uh, you, uh, wherever he's uh, getting, so the military is obviously not an option because, as I said, they have uh, themselves also denied it. And it, that also shows that nobody wants to associate themselves <laughs> with this uh, interesting uh, person. And uh, I know that a lot of foreign countries whose names were taken have also denied uh, their uh, support for him. but. Interestingly, uh, the level of uh, public campaign, uh, media campaign, and it's extremely expensive one. So if anybody felt so strongly about helping 180 million people in Pakistan, they would not be using public funds which have been given for charitable work uh, to pro promote uh, their self-projection. So in any case, I think this is, uh, is something which will pass. Uh, this was a good uh, you know, effort on the part of a certain person uh, to create a lot of uh, instability. And do you th just on the last point on him, do you think there's any legitimacy to any of the demands or is he appealing to something that people want? No, as I said, you see those demands cannot be outside the parameters of constitution for one. And then uh, we all demand electoral reforms. That's why we have political parties and that's why those political parties who are legitimate and credible went through an amendment to the constitution to have electoral reforms whereby